Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Steve Lewis. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Relevance for today. If it's your first time, welcome to the show. Hey, you've got over 300 episodes to go back and check out sometime, do some binge listening and watching. Hey, but for those of you who have been with me for a long time or even just a few days, whatever it might be, thank you all for being here, listening and watching the show. Truly appreciate it. It's a blessing to have you on the other end. So in this episode, doing something special as we're wrapping up the season for relevance for today podcast going to be stepping into a new season coming up which i'll be announcing about in the next episode this day and age we're living in a time folks where the lord's return is sooner rather than later right and some may say what do you mean sooner that's like well we're one day closer than we were yesterday right one day closer when the apostle paul was writing about it one day closer, but we need to be prepared. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, this is it right here. This is a message. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, my hope and prayer is that you'll ask Jesus Christ to, in your life as your Savior and Lord. You'll turn from your old ways and allow him to live through you and in you through the Holy Spirit. It's not a get out of hell free card. It's about a relationship it's about salvation. It's about turning your from your old ways and turning to the new. Amen? Hey, remember that. So we're going to be, I was reading and studying the other day, and as I was studying, I read a passage of scripture, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's it right there. I was reading it in my Bible here, and uh, I came across that passage, and I thought, you know what? That's it. I need to share that in an episode. Because the title of it was, The Day of the Lord is Coming. The Day of the Lord is Coming. <laughs> blow, blow the dust off that Bible. Blow the dust off of your Bible. Read it. Get in it. Don't just read it like a novel. Read it and study it. Take your time and read the passages. And I know I just literally just jumped in on an insert real quick, but I just had to say that since I'm holding my Bible in my hand. The day of the Lord is coming. Don't wait till the last minute. Make sure you got some oil in your lamp. Just like the passages of Scripture talk about, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're not caught unawares. So... I just want to read this passage. I'm going to be putting the Bible verses up on the screen, might share a few things, but I'm focusing more on the Word of God than I am Steve Lewis's inserts. Amen? So let's jump right in. The day of the Lord is coming, and this is 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. Mine, this is in the New Living Translation, and the heading reads, The day of the Lord is coming. And as you folks know, it's... August 2023, 2023, listen to me, 2024 right now, you can see the world changing. I'm not going to get on a rant, but you know the Bible verse where it talks about what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. You can go out here and stand up for the unborn child and be persecuted for it. You can go out here and stand up for... Um, traditional marriage according to the word of God with a male and female and get given a hard time over it. It's so many different things. It's crazy. You don't know one thing from the next, but the bottom line is stand on the word of God first and foremost. Like my dad always said, keep God first. Matthew 6, 33. You've heard me say it many times on this podcast episode. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. You focus on God. Dad always said, Hey, son, just remember, keep God first. Birthday cards. Hey, son, remember, keep God first. Mom and dad love you. Keep God first. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Keep God first. Keep God first. I heard it all my life, and I'm glad I heard it all my life. 
So let's jump into this because you know me, I'll start talking. So here we go. Once again, 2 Peter chapter 3, we'll start off with verse 1 and go from there. The day of the Lord is coming. This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. Now, isn't that amazing? This was written thousands of years ago by Peter, but yet there's things he stated that we're hearing today. Isn't that something? I know some of you heard it right off the bat. What happened to the promise that Jesus is coming back? Where is he, right? There's been so many situations where we miss the mark. You know, the year 2000, Jesus is coming back. This year, he's coming back. That year, he's coming back. No man will know but you will see the signs of the times. But the bottom line is the same things that Peter was talking about back then, we're facing today, we're hearing today. You might as well say it's prophetic word being poured out, letting us know what this day and age is going to be like. So continuing on with verse five, they deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago By the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Isn't that beautiful? Don't know about it? Read the account in Genesis of how the world was created, how everything was created. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And of course, that was Noah's ark. Noah and his family went through. God had to flood the earth because the earth had, it was just evil. What he had created was corrupted, so he had to do that flood. But then he gave us a promise. He gave us a promise in the sky with the rainbow, right? The seven-color rainbow, not the six-color rainbow. The seven-color rainbow from God. Yes, there is a difference in the numbers of colors. Once again, he used the water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. Trust me, you don't want to be wrong on this. You know, some people say, well, I'll try the Christian thing. And if I'm right, I'm going to heaven. If I'm wrong, it's okay. The bottom line is God created the heavens and earth and sea and everything in it. Man sinned. God sent his one and only son down to save us, to save the world, to rekindle, to bring back the relationship between God and man, to bridge the gap after that gap was made when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Satan took away Adam's rights on this earth, became the prince of this earth. In the meantime, God had a plan, send Jesus down, in the form of a man, save us. The sacrificial lamb hung on the cross, rose from the grave, defeated death, took the keys back. Yes. Now we have the chance when we ask Jesus Christ into our life to be our Savior and Lord, to have a relationship once again with our Heavenly Father, getting the Holy Spirit within us and living a life filled with, with the Spirit for the kingdom of God. Amen? And almost went on a rant. Almost. Okay, but here we go. Right back at it again. But you must not forget this one thing. This is verse 8. Dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. That's love right there, folks. He is waiting. The Lord is waiting to come back. 
Heavenly Father sitting back saying, I want everybody to repent. I, I did not create the lake of fire for everybody. It was meant for Satan. It was not meant for man, my creation. He's waiting, just like it said. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. And that's it right there. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. So I'm going to stop right there. Because what he said was so important. We should be living a holy and godly life on this earth. Knowing what's coming. Knowing that the day of judgment is going to come for those who don't believe. Knowing that if we are not walking the walk that we're supposed to be walking, it's going to be a rough journey. We need to get focused. We need to stay focused. Don't get confused. Don't get distracted about all the craziness and the political craziness. You know what's right from wrong. You know, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. When it comes to voting, you take out your Bible and you go down the list of candidates and not look at the candidates, but look at the platform. Look at the platform that the people represent and what they stand for as a whole. Remember, one person cannot run a government. One person can't run a country. Yes, they will be at the head and be the president. But the bottom line is you need to check and see. There's some Christian bulletins that come out, and I think it's from the Christian League or something like that. It's a chart that shows you it might say abortion. And then it'll show you Republican or Democrat who goes for which. Um, holding up marriage between a male and a female. It'll give you a chart showing that. It'll show you for different things. Closed borders, protected borders. All these different things come into play. And you sit back and you do your research and you study and you pray about it. And find out who you want to vote for. Because at the end of the day... We're living in a day and age where things are getting crazy and hectic. They're getting out of control. But the word says it's going to happen. Chaos, mass destruction. It's just a mess. But focus on Jesus Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you in a mighty way. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Get in that Bible. Read the word of God. Get into it. Get ready Prepare as if you're going into a battle, as if you're going into a spiritual war. You want to make sure you have the Word of God in here, up here, being about the Father's business. Amen? Live that Christ-like life. So once again, as it says, since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what, a holy, what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Amen. And I'm not going to read it today because you guys have heard me read it quite a bit, but it's like going to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. You read about that because it says here, make every effort to be found living, peace, living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Well, how do I do that, Peter? Okay, well then you go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. You learn about love. You go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, and you learn how you used to act and how you should be acting now to this day. You go to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and you learn about the fruit of the Spirit. There's all these different things you can do by digging in the Word of God, and that's why it's so important when you know how to get into the Word of God. When you have the, God, the Word of God handy, you can sit back and pull that out and say, oh, okay, I'm going to start asking the Scripture questions. Peter, how do I act like that? Go to the Word, find out, learn, 
get trained, get equipped so you can be who God calls you to be, so you can be found living a peaceful life, right? A peaceful life that is pure and blameless. That's what it's all about. So what I love to do encouraging people to get into the Word is because you can get into the Word, and it's a tool. Remember the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. You get into that Word, and you learn from it, and you glean from it. And then you put feet to faith and you get out here and you live that life so other people will want to come to know who Jesus Christ is too. Make sense? Amen? Okay, so continuing on with the last portion, verses 15 and 16. And remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters... Some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture, and this will result in their destruction. And of course, then Peter closes his letter, and of course his letter was to followers of Jesus Christ. His letter were to Christians, and we are Christians. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you fall in that category. So when you're getting in the Word and reading the Word, you can glean off of it and dig into it. Amen? And I just wanted to share this passage. It wasn't one of those things where I'm going to go through and break it all down and all kinds of stuff. I wanted to get in and remind you of what's coming our way, that the world's coming to an end here soon, whether it's five years, 10 years, 30 years, who knows, whether it's tomorrow. The day of the Lord is coming, and we have to remember that. Be prepared, get equipped, get trained up, Listen to some teachings, some different teachers. Um, I recommend for podcasts and even for Sunday messages and things like that, whether you're in a church or not, you're mowing the grass, you're working around the house, get your players out, your MP3 players, your Alexas or whatever you have around the house. Play Jensen Franklin. Jensen Franklin has a podcast. It's really good. Uh, Jack Hibbs. A friend of ours turned me on to Jack Hibbs. I'm telling you what, the man is anointed. He's straight to the point. He's down to earth. He'll talk to you about what's going on in this day and age, the wars, the battles, the spiritual battles. He'll talk to you about the Word of God. They read from the Word of God. They teach from the Word of God. Jack Hibbs podcast. Check it out. Really good podcast to check out. Um, There's a few other people and... uh, But listen to those. Also look up our pastors, pastors Matt and Amy Carpenter. Theirs is called 5.0, Fivefold and Beyond, Doctors Matt and Amy. Check them out, I-H-I-M-T-V, in his image, Ministries. They've got a great podcast. Uh, You've got Frank Viola, even Frank Viola. He has uh, the Insurgents podcast. Really good podcast, folks. Check him out as well. And uh, there's different ones. John Bevere. I don't know if you've heard of John and Lisa Bevere, but they also have a podcast show, uh, the John Bevere Podcast. So you've got the John Bevere Podcast. And then you have John and Lisa Bevere also have one called Conversations with John and Lisa. So check those different ones out. And, of course, check mine out, but I didn't want to toot my own horn. But check out those podcasts, listen to those, get encouraged, get strengthened, you'll be equipped. You can go through the cool part about listening to podcasts. You just go in there to the podcast app, you scroll through, find out what you want to listen to. You can even do a search in those actual podcast names that I told you about. And then if you go to YouTube, you can check out Jensen Franklin over there. You can check out Jack Hibbs. You can check out John Bevere. Um, also check out Maggie Barado. Maggie Barado. She has a show now called the Maggie B Show. Awesome stuff, folks. You need to check her out as well. But head over to Kingdom Community TV. Kingdom Community TV has all of our shows in there. It's a Christian-based app, Christian-based platform. I've got my TV shows over there. You can go on there. Um, Pastor Glenn Blakeney, and all these amazing ministers and ministries are on there. There's things for all ages, all the way down to children, all the way up to adults, up to age 100, 200. The bottom line is 
kingdomcommunity.tv. You can go check them out online, or you can get the app for your phone. You can get the app for your tablet. You can get the app for your smartphone, and it's set up almost like using Netflix or all these other different players. It's amazing. Good quality, great stuff. Check that out as well. Hey, so I just wanted to get on and share that today, give you some encouragement. Just it's time to get equipped, folks. Amen. Hey, let's go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for being able to share this message about the day of the Lord is coming soon. The day of the Lord is coming. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for all my listeners and watchers that they'll listen to this message, let it marinate, but not only listen to it, they'll actually put some feet to faith, grab their Bibles, start reading them, get into the Word. They'll check out some of these podcast shows and TV shows that I listed off, Jack Hibbs, uh, Jensen Franklin, Maggie B., Glenn Blakeney, King the Community TV, myself, and all these different locations as well. I just pray for peace and comfort, strength, hope, wisdom, love, guidance, guidance from the Holy Spirit for each and every one that's listening to me right now. I just pray for them. I ask you to watch over them, protect them, and keep them safe. And I thank you for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. I truly hope you're blessed with what I shared with you. Please do me a favor. Please, please, please share the show with others. Let them know about Relevance for Today podcast show. Every time you let someone know, you're helping me get these messages out, which is all kingdom work. So, Lord, I ask you just, Lord, listen to me. So I just ask that you guys would do that for me. Share those things for me. That'd be fantastic. Also, do me a favor. If you're over at Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave me a rating on the show. show. Spread the word on your different uh, apps and things like that and uh, your social media platforms and whatnot. Just share Relevance for Today podcast show. I truly appreciate it. Hey, with that being said, love you all. Take care of yourselves. Be ready because the day of the Lord is coming soon. Hey, love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace.